Hooray! <gasps> Even with all that indulging, I lost weight over the holidays. <laughs> Have a wonderful day at school, girls. I've made each of you an organic vegan lunch. Now go forth and learn. Learn, my darlings. <laughs> darlings. 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 Darling, Happy New Year. Darling, that was weeks ago. What? No, that can't be right. I just put the Christmas decorations away. January is more than half over. What? And I think it's high time you got back to it, as the saying goes. Okay, back to it. Yes, darling, goals. Right, plans. Yes, resolutions. Why not? Maybe some exercise. Let's not get crazy. A little calorie counting. All right. It is an important year, darling. Okay, I'll see what I can do. There's that can-do spirit. Hey, maybe I'll do a dry month. <laughs> a lot less calories to count. <sighs> hey, make sure to watch to the end. I have a little something I want to share with you. Hey everyone, I'm Andy. Welcome to season three of Furniture Fables. To everything, there is a season, and furniture is no exception. In January and February here in our neck of the woods, selling pieces kind of slows down a bit, but in this quieter time of year, it can be kind of nice to take your time with a more high maintenance project an antique in desperate need of a second chance, ready to shed her old veneers. When I saw this old beauty listed for free on the marketplace, I knew I had to try and go and get her. I was immediately charmed by her solid wood construction and rosebud pulls. When I picked up the dresser, the veneer was a little bit loose, but by the time I started working on it, a large portion of it was warping and lifting away on its own. I knew this little high boy dresser was going to need a complete veneer removal on those lower four drawers. And so I started by removing them all, making sure to number them and then I removed those floral pulls. One of the candle's flower was loose and another one was missing the flower altogether. So I knew I was going to have to do something to replace that if I wanted to keep those original pulls. While I was inspecting the piece, I noticed its label. This high boy dresser was made by the Dorenbecher Furniture Company based in Portland, Oregon and was most likely constructed in the 20s. I started in on removing the drawers of veneers. Here you can see the marks left from some kind of molding embellishment. You can see how easily a lot of this was coming off, but there was a portion where the old glue was still holding on, and so I got out my Wagner heat gun. A heat gun is a great tool to have in your arsenal. I always go over all the safety protocols whenever I get it out, like how you set the gun down with the tip pointing up so it can cool itself. And tempting as it may be, please don't use the gun as a hairdryer. You can also check out this handy dandy chart to get a good idea of what level to set the gun at depending on the job that you are doing and which, if any, attachment to use. 
I attached the flare tip and then started blasting the veneer with the heat, always making sure to keep the gun moving to avoid scorching the wood. You can see here how that old varnish is bubbling up and kind of turning whitish, which kind of makes a helpful roadmap of where you've been. After I heated up a section, I carefully used my utility knife to get under that veneer and pry it up. So at first I thought maybe the two smaller top drawers could keep their veneers, but upon closer inspection, I realized they were also kind of starting to crackle in the center and I felt pretty certain it was only a matter of a short time before they started to let go completely. So I used my heat gun again, focusing that heat blast on those corners so that I could get my knife in and under. It's not all that uncommon to still have a couple of stubborn spots. And so for those, I got out my shiny new toy. This is the gorgeous Festool Random Orbital Rotex 125 Sander. Yes, there is a new orbital in town, folks, and I am so excited. My poor old orbital was kind of on her last legs. You may notice I actually have two new toys because the Sander is attached to a Festool dust extractor. And honestly, I don't know which one I'm more jazzed about <laughs> because I hate sanding dust with a fiery passion. Because this whole system is completely new to me, I won't go into details about it in this fable, but do let me know in the comments below if you'd like to learn more about this system and I will plan to share all about my experience with it in a future fable. The sander made quick work of that stubborn little bit of old veneer, and I was so happy to see that my hope was right. There was beautiful solid wood underneath those old veneers. Then it was finally time to clean. I affixed a bucket of clear water, and just a little bit of simple green and gave the dresser two good scrub downs. Ugh, you can see why. And a very good rinse. And then I scrubbed those rosebud pulls. I got pretty aggressive with them, I have to say, actually using my brass brush and really getting into all their grooves. I always feel like old pulls like these have about a century's worth of gunk stuck into those little ridge details. So yeah, a good scrubbing seemed. Like it was an order. Okay, what is this scariness? Well, this is a crafting syringe, which is super helpful for fixes like the one I had just discovered I needed to do. A very common repair for an old piece like this is that lower trim or veneer that has come loose from the top, usually in the corner. So using this craft syringe, you can get your wood glue way up and into the back of that little space. I clamped that corner and wiped up the glue, and then of course found another corner that needed the same fix. This is kind of the rule with antiques. There's always another spot that needs the same repair. <laughs> I clamped that corner and then let them both dry overnight. I came back the next morning and the corners looked great, so I got ready to make a replacement rosebud. I used this amazing mold putty. I love this stuff. It is so easy to use. You just take equal parts of both colors and then mix them together until the putty becomes one color. It kind of looks like banana flavored chewing gum. And then you press your object into that mold putty and 20 minutes later, you discovered that the putty hasn't set up like it's supposed to. 
ah, because you left it out in the garage and it's quite chilly. So you take it inside where the house is much warmer. And 20 minutes after that, ta-da, there you go. Rosebud mold. <laughs> the good kind. There was one spot in the front of the dresser's top that had some loose veneer. So I removed all of that and then I got out my Bondo kit. Bondo is a super hard wood filler that is great for top repairs because of its hardness. And I was pretty sure that it would do the trick for our missing rosebud. Following the directions, I mixed together the two parts and then quickly, because it does have a fairly brief open time, quickly applied it to the top of the dresser and filled up that flower mold. Bondo hardens pretty quick, so about 20 minutes later, Voila! It might just work, fingers crossed. Okay, I got my gorgeous new sander out and did the first pass over that Bondo repair. And then I got out my surf prep sander to do a more fine and gentle sanding. I realized I didn't have the correct adapter for my surf prep to attach into my new dust extractor so dust was flying everywhere. I cannot wait for that little piece to come in the mail. As I was cleaning up the dust, I found another pretty good scratch. Well, something between a scratch and a gouge. A scrouge? <laughs> and so I mixed up a little more Bondo and applied that to the top of the dresser. Also proving my point about these older pieces there's never one boo-boo on the top. There's always another one. <laughs> I sanded that down when it was dry and then scuff sanded the entire piece. While I was sanding that bottom trim, I discovered some leftover nails from a decorative mold piece that was down there. And they were the teeniest, tiniest nails I have ever seen. Look at that, my goodness. Yikes, ooh. Would not want to get that in my foot. Okay, finally to do a little dust cleanup. Oops, gotta put your ear protection on when you use that blower. So remember those teeny tiny nails? Well, looking at that drawer that also had a decorative piece on its front, I saw the old nail holes and decided to go ahead and fill those along with a little crack that was on top of that drawer. And remembering my rule about these older pieces this time, I also remembered to fill the little tiny nail holes on the top sides where there had again also been some decorative molds. Once that had all dried, I gave everything a good sanding and then it was finally ready to prime. I am using Zinzer Bin Shellac based primer. This is an old piece with a dark stain with wood filler and sanded areas to cover. And so we need a good primer. We need it to block potential bleed through and to help with adhesion and really nothing compares to shellac based primer. I applied the first coat with my mini roller and after that dried, I grabbed my caulking gun because, surprise, surprise, I need to do another little filling job. <laughs> it is super common for a piece of this age and constructed with inset side panels like this to have little gaps showing and a great trick to remedy this 
is to use paintable caulk. Everything about this product and its applicator gun makes it ideal for these long corner gaps like this. Okay, once that fix had dried, I did my second coat of primer, and then hooray, I finally got to get out my paint. This is Sage Advice by Country Chic Paint. I was going to use it last summer, but changed my mind, and apparently the summer sun melted off its label. But you can see that the paint is totally brand new and ready to go. I added about eight to 10 sprays of water just to kind of get the paint moving and then using my Country Chic Oval Brush, started in on that first coat. It was actually a really nice day, and so I brought my little friend out onto the driveway so that I could paint that second coat while listening to the birds sing. You may have seen my fable about the undonatable dresser. I used a sage color for that piece as well. That sage was by Fusion Mineral Paint. To my eye, Country Chic's sage is really similar, but perhaps with a bit less silvery undertones, maybe a bit greener is how I would describe it. Okay, so at this point I had some decisions to make. So I put all of the drawers back into the dresser and stood back to take a look at things. You can see just how varied and inconsistent the wood is on those drawer fronts. I have to say though, I was not hating it. To me, the much more rugged and real appearance of that wood is refreshing and it's appealing, but it was way too dominant for me. So I decided to try a paint on bare wood stencil. I chose this geometric floral pattern. I felt that it would be a great contrast to the more sweet and traditional floral pulls. Using that same oval brush, I dabbed off any excess paint and began stenciling. You can see I'm mostly using a stippling or up and down motion. I had also decided to center the stencil on the two holes for the pulls. Because I did that, I did my third stencil centered right in the middle of the drawer. And then to keep the center flower of the stencil spaced out evenly, I put that one in between the first and the third stencil and just kind of feathered in the edges, just kind of blended it into the stencils that were already there. Because this piece is what I would call modern rustic, and by that I mean it is perfectly imperfect, I felt that this approach would work best. I knew I could go back and sand the stencil to soften those transitions. So while that first drawer dried, I quickly did a third and final coat of Sage Advice, and then I brought the long drawers into the garage and stenciled the rest.
I continued the stencil out to the edges of the entire face of all the drawers. Once everything had dried, I gave them a good sanding with a fine grit rad pad, softening those edges and removing any raised and rough bits of paint. So lots of times I like to do a watered down coat on my painted tops. It really helps to give your top a nice, smooth, as close to brush stroke free surface as possible. So I mixed up a little bit of paint and water. It was probably about three parts paint to one part of water and gave that top one last coat. Okay, let's see about our little flower. I broke off the big excess pieces on my mold and then I got out my Dremel and using a polishing bit attachment, I began carefully sanding around the edges and smoothing out the bottom. I kept checking it and comparing it to that loose flower trying to make sure I wasn't removing too much material and fitting it into the handle. Nope, not quite there. Until my replacement fit nicely. Then I used some Gorilla Super Glue to attach the loose flower and my new flower. All right, there we go. So you can see, of course, that my new flower does not look like carved wood. <laughs> But also there are a couple of these older flowers that have also lost some of their stain. Instead of a stain, I decided to try something much less fussy, brown paint. This is chocolate by Fusion, and it actually worked quite well. I refreshed the older flowers and painted my new one. Continuing on with the final touches, I used a small artist brush to bring my Sage Advice paint cleanly into my dresser frame. This is always a good idea on any piece, but pretty much essential when working with one of this age, because the drawers, of course, are not going to sit perfectly. Then it was time for some more finished sanding. These rad pads are fantastic for that. I had already finished sanded the body outside, but needed to do that top after my last coat of paint. Ah, the top felt so nice and smooth now. I replanted those flower pulls and then put the drawers back in. Then I got out my gilding wax and I gilded the flowers just a little bit. They originally actually had had some kind of gilding that I could see a little bit on a few of them here and there. So this new little bit of metallic wax looked perfect. That's the rosebud that we made with the Bondo. Looks pretty good. <laughs> I couldn't forget the drawer interiors, so I used some of my metallic gold bee paper to line the drawer bottoms. Then I gave all of that old timber some conditioning with this orange grove scented wax, making sure to hit the slides on the drawers and also the inside of the dresser to help smooth out the drawer action. I really love to save 
any old math that I find on these old timbers. So I was careful not to paint over that multiplication and um, I sealed it with some wax to protect it for the future. To seal this piece up, I decided to use this hemp oil wood finish by Fusion. I had had this for a while, but hadn't tried it out yet and felt like this piece was really well suited for it. You can use a brush or a rag. And so I decided to start out very conservatively, just kind of working the oil in with a lint-free cloth. But as I went, I decided to get a little more gutsy and I switched over to a chip brush and just kind of slathered it on. I know that after about 20 minutes, you are supposed to come back and wipe up whatever the wood or the paint has not soaked up. So after I did that, I did a heavier application on the drawer fronts and that bare wood just soaked up this oil. It looked so happy. It really made those drawer fronts glow and I really had a nice time working with it. I didn't have to wear a mask. It was no big deal if it got on my hands. This oil is food grade. It has absolutely no VOCs. It's just a really, really uh, easygoing, environmentally friendly product. Okay, do you remember our wavy and wrinkly, gouged and grungy gal? with the lost jewelry and the wilting bouquet? And here she is now. Cheers to 100 years and many more. That gorgeous shade of sage green is just dancing with those natural wood tones, both under the stencil and in those solid wood top drawers. All of the peeling veneer is gone and in its place, we see what was underneath. Nothing fancy, nothing fine, but solid and timeless. That decision to go pick her up that one sunny day, a sage one indeed. That old gal put this old-ish gal through her paces. That little dresser took me about eight hours. And if I pay myself $45 an hour, that would be $360 for my labor. My out-of-pocket costs were pretty minimal with this project. All in, she only cost me about $35. So the dresser will list for $395. There's something so symbolically pleasing about removing old veneer and discovering something strong and beautiful in a different way. Who knows, maybe if this little dresser survives another hundred years, someone will put new veneer back onto her or do something I can't even imagine right now. And you know what? Nothing would make me happier. I'm just thrilled I got to play a small part in keeping her out of the landfill and setting her back on a path towards a new story. And speaking of transformative stories, my special news is that I am going to try my hand at vlogging. You know, I have been wanting for a while to take some time and really focus in on my overall health, my fitness, my weight, and the run up to my 50th birthday, which is in about seven months from now, seemed like the perfect time. So if you would like to come along with me on that journey, keep an eye out for that vlogging channel launch announcement. It's going to be real. I hope you enjoyed today's fable. If so, please leave me a thumbs up 
and let me know what you thought about this dresser's transformation. Lots of things to comment about on this one. Thank you so much for joining me, my friends. I will see you next time for more Furniture Fables.